Hi everyone, a very good morning to all of you. So today is 11th of December and let's start with the Hindu newspaper analysis discussion for today. So in this particular video, we are going to discuss entire analysis of Hindu newspaper. We'll take all articles along with the background as well as detailed way forward. And also I would like to inform you that you can download explainer notes of this session from our Telegram channel. Link for Telegram is given in description box in YouTube. Now, first of all, let's take overview of entire newspaper so that you can understand that which articles are relevant for our examination in today's paper. So let's take this particular overview and here we are going to use the daily edition of Hindu newspaper. Now, first page, first article that we have here is key COP document calls for progress in adaptation uh, in adapting to climate change by 2030. We will take this particular article because right now, COP28 negotiations meetings are going on in Dubai. So we'll take this particular article. Then Vishnu Dev Sai chosen as a new Chhattisgarh CM. Okay, so recently elections have got concluded in Chhattisgarh and because of that new CM is being sworn in. But for your examination, you are not really required to track the details with respect to this particular development. Then further moving on, uh, India Block plans next meet. So India Block is the chief opposition group that has been formed fine for 2024 elections then we have these details etc not very much important then in city section city section regional issues largely the advertisements etc tenders have been given which are not important for examination so directly we'll skip this particular section okay and uh, uh, will directly be reaching to editorial section okay now as we reach an editorial first article that we have calibrating a strategy for india's future growth Good article, it has talked of, uh, see, economic data, economic numbers have been given. And on that particular basis, it is talking that what are the challenges for Indian economy in the medium and short term and how Indian economy should deal with that. So we'll take this particular article. Then on side, a bad precedent. Now this article is talking about expulsion of an MP, Maua Moitra, that has happened from Lok Sabha on allegations that she has taken money to ask favorable questions for a business group. Now, this article is just analyzing the nitty gritties that okay, how allegations were made, then what type of questions were asked and all such kind of a thing. Article for examination is not containing academic substance, but I will recommend you, though I have discussed this entire incident, role of ethics committee, Supreme Court judgments, multiple number of times, but I have also made a dedicated video on expulsion of MP Mahua Moitra, where all the dimensions important for GS2 and GS4 have been covered. So I'll suggest you that please watch that particular video if you have not done. Then next, uh, no more hot air about air pollution. We'll take this particular article also for examination. Okay, this article talks about recent monetary policy committee, which have given its decision that repo rate will be kept unchanged. Okay, now one more thing guys that when we talk about repo rate, the repo rate happens to be a important instrument mechanism to, uh, to deal with inflation. Okay, now it has been unchanged. Now guys understand this thing, monetary policy committee is a bi-monthly committee. In every two months, it will give its recommendations. You are not really required to track every day details in this particular, uh, every um, detail in this particular direction. Because by the time you will be writing examination, these particular MPC will, new will come and some new recommendation will be given. The hypocrisy of Western democracy. Now guys see this particular thing that right now, there is Israel-Hamas war that is going on and in this capacity we have seen that Israel has carried so many attacks in Gaza and thousands of people including children, they have died, civilians who did not participate in attacks. Okay, the first attack which was carried by, uh, the, the attacks that were carried by the Hamas. Okay, though they were not involved in that but they are being punished which is unethical and western world Countries such as USA, they are silent. They are showing a kind of a hypocrisy. Now, again, guys, uh, this article, though we have, uh, it, it is having too much of an over-critical tones. Now, for examination, guys, I'll not recommend you to go too much in deep in this. Okay? For academic substance, that is not there. Then further, we come to text and context section. 
on a listing of cases in the Supreme Court. Now, what this particular article is? So, basically, guys, what has happened recently, two of the letters have been written by the lawyers, Mr. Dushyant Dev and Prashant Bhushan. Okay, where they are bringing this particular thing that some of the cases, they have been shifted to other judges bench. So, this particular article is just talking that on which date article, uh, sorry, on which date open letter was written, what was written in that particular letter, which case was referred to which particular bench. Now, understand this particular thing that basically as we talk about judiciary, it happens to be an important topic for GS paper number two, polity. But such kind of, such kind of things are not needed to be really tracked that, okay, the letter was written, okay, which date, all such things are not needed. Then, what is controversy over Germany's debt break rule? Fine, we'll take this particular article. Then, further moving on, can chat GPT, the chatbot developed by OpenAI, replace human therapist? So, guys, recently we have seen this particular thing that chat, G, no, chat GPT is a chatbot which can carry the human like conversation. So, there have been certain rounds that it, will it replace the human, real human talks or conversations or not. Then, further moving on, freebie politics will take a toll on economy, Dhankar. So, we have seen that Vice President, Vice President uh, has specifically talked about freebie and on freebie, multiple, multiple uh, on the issue of freebie, multiple leaders have talked about. For example, last year, Prime Minister has referred to freebie culture as a remedy culture. What are freebies? Freebies are free goodies, okay, or some irrational free promise that is being made to electors if they vote to a particular political party. For example, if I won election, I will, I will give free trips to some foreign destination to all the people, or I will give free juicer mixer grinders, okay, or if I won, I will give free motorbike to everyone in the constituency. These are the freebies and often these freebies, they lead to economic distortion, they put undue economic pressure on resources, okay. Then guys, further moving on, how should India be in 2047 government to seek inputs from students, okay. Then guys, further moving on in this particular election, center had not opposed caste survey in Bihar, Okay, political trends, etc. Cases of human trafficking victims being forced to commit cyber crimes. We'll take this particular article. Then further guys, moving in this particular direction. Okay, uh, so largely here we have the political articles. Okay, uh, nothing much important is there. Ethics panel asked Mahua to explain nature of friendship with industrialists. So some personal questions have been asked which were that time uh, MP even walked out of the committee uh, proceedings that were going on. Okay, then moving on. Switzerland-Norway ministers arriving for dialogue, we'll take this particular article. Uh, Vishwakarma scheme is being discussed in this article, we'll take this article also. Okay, then guys, uh, we have a money wise page today as it is Monday on Monday. Business page or economy page is not published in Hindu, this money wise page comes. And today money wise page, it is talking about the Charlie Munger. Now, Charlie Munger was uh, one of a key aide or partner of Warren Buffett. He recently passed. He recently passed. So, about his legacy, the article is talking about. Though for UPSC article is not important, but he has been really an inspirational person and his views on philosophy, business, they are, they are worth reading. Okay, so if you have interest, you can read this particular article, but not specifically needed for examination. Okay, then moving on, world page, again, the world page, one article is now fixed on Israel-Gaza, okay, uh, Malay Swenon is Argentina, okay, uh, then we have sports page, and guys, let's see what article is there in the science page. Now, as we have science page, the article that is there, how fractals offer a new way to see the quantum realm, okay. Now, guys, understand this thing that when we talk about science, the GS paper number three or prelims examination, Application of science and technology, application of science and technology, okay, usage of science and technology in every, everyday life, okay, their questions are asked, but questions on core quantum mechanics, questions on core computing, questions on core research papers and medicine, etc., they are not really important. So, I have read this entire article, but guys, the article is not relevant for our examination, okay, so no need to go too much in that detail. So, that is all guys about it. I hope that you have understood the, you have understood that which articles are actually relevant in our exam, uh, in the newspaper for our examination. And now let's take all these relevant articles one by one in detail. So, as I told you that you can download synoptic notes. So, this is synoptic notes in which we have one GS quotation with which we start. 
and these DS quotations can be used to complement your answers and then we have articles along with their background. So today's GS quotation will be uh, that we are going to take is from Douglas Adams. So Douglas Adams says that to give real service, you must add something which cannot be bought or measured with money and that is sincerity and integrity and that is sincerity and integrity. Now understand this thing that if you are giving real service, if you are giving Nishkam service, if you are giving service with the notion of bringing some impact, then that particular service should not only have physical efforts because the physical efforts could be paid off in terms of money. Along with that physical efforts, there should be devotion, there should be sincerity, there should be integrity, there should be sincerity and integrity. So this particular thing or this particular message is particularly relevant for civil uh, for the civil servants fine who have to work relentlessly for the service of nation. You can use this particular idea for GS paper number 4 ethics, GS paper number 4 ethics you can use it also for essay we can use this particular idea. Now moving on guys in this particular direction and guys today we are starting with our power play prelims test series so today 11th of December first test is going to be there and uh, uh, if you have joined the test series guys already you might have seen the orientation class that we have taken yesterday on the portal however if you are planning to have a roadmap for upcoming prelims I will advise you that you can join this particular test series in which we are offering 70 plus test covering both CSAT as well as GS. There will be sectional test as well as the full length test that will be there and the test will adequately cover all the areas of your GS, current affairs, economic survey, budget. Okay, details about the test series and the features that are there have been given here. You can just download this file synoptic notes from our telegram channel. Okay, and this, this entire test series is right now being offered at the price of triple nine plus taxes. Okay. And soon it will revert back to its original price that is 3999 plus taxes. Okay. So if you wish to join, you can join by scanning this QR code and you can or you can register at www.sahilsaini.net. There is one question also, sir. What is the time of test? So there is a schedule that has been given already. You can download that schedule and on the designated day at 10 a.m. in the morning, you will get the access to the test. After that, you can give the test on that day or you have flexibility also to postpone it but I will not advise you to uh, use that flexibility okay now let's take first article for today okay so we have this article 21.15 lakh applications received under PM Vishwakarma scheme says the skill ministry now how many applications are received is not important okay but in this particular article we are going to see what this Vishwakarma scheme is all about what this Vishwakarma scheme is all about because in past few years multiple questions have been asked on schemes in particular also guys these particular schemes happens to be important for your GS papers also you can use it now this particular article we'll see with respect to GS paper number two GS paper number two government schemes for the welfare of for the welfare of the vulnerable section of society skill development now let's take let's take the basic let's take uh, let's take the basic uh, details about this particular article okay okay so recently government of india has launched pm vishwakarma scheme now this pm vishwakarma scheme is for traditional artisans, skills, uh, basically craftsmen, traditional artisans, craftsmen to empower them. Now guys understand this particular thing. There are the traditional artisans, craftsmen who are carrying over their heritage. Okay. They are doing some weaving work. They are making dolls. They are making baskets, etc. Now these particular people have to be given support which in terms of financial support, in terms of uh, training. They are to be given market exposure so that their products can reach the wider audience. Often economic viability is not there with these artisans. They are carrying on these particular ancient heritage but they don't make good money. So expertise is to be given, tools are to be given, training is to be given, market exposure is to be given to these particular people. And to empower these artisans, there is, there is this PM Vishwakarma scheme that has been 
has been launched by the government and this pm vishwakarma scheme aims to nurture strengthen and propagate guru shishya parampara guru shishya parampara teacher student tradition and it also aims to empower the artisans which are carrying forward the family based occupation now in this particular scheme what components are there in this particular scheme what components are there number 1 it will provide for formal training okay it will provide for formal training so that skills can be upgraded skills can be upgraded now guys a lot of thing might be done by the hands but if you give them good tools same amount of work with good the same quality could be done in the less time so formal training can be given how they can upgrade their particular skills how their skills can be modernized how modernization of their traditional skills can be done also financial assistance will be given to these particular artisans so that they can procure raw material so that they can reach the market they can penetrate the market also market linkages will be given for these particular people now what is market linkage let's say guys there is a particular artisans group living in a particular part of a country and they are making really beautiful dolls okay but they are not getting good price okay but what they can do they can sell their dolls on amazon okay or on ebay and directly they can connect with the consumer who will be able to give them good price okay so market linkages financial assistance formal training modernization assistance all these things will be given under this pm vishwakarma now this particular scheme will be focusing on 18 trades and crafts 18 type of trades and crafts and what are these 18 type of trades and crafts no need to remember it by heart but just simply you can go through this particular list carpenter boat makers boat makers armorer blacksmith hammer and tool kit maker locksmith goldsmith potter sculptor cobbler mason basket maker so these 18 crafts and people doing this following these 18 trades and crafts they will be empowered now under this particular scheme what will happen artisans and crafts people they can apply they can apply for enrollment and as recently enrollment were open 21 lakh applications have been received as we have seen in heading now basically what will happen art artisans and the crafts people they will get pm vishwakarma certificate pm vishwakarma certificate that they have upgraded their skills also they will get an id card they will get an id card and credit support will be provided and credit support in two tranches will be provided and maximum credit support of up to 3 lakh rupees can be given now in the first tranche first payment credit support of 1 lakh rupees and in second tranche credit support of 2 lakh rupees means in total 3 lakh rupees credit support can be given so that they can expand their business and this particular money will be provided at a subsidized loan sub concessional sorry concessional interest rate of just 5% concessional interest rate of just 5% now in this particular under this particular scheme there are two type of a skilling program one is basic and other is the advanced skilling program and a stipend of rupees 500 per day will also be provided while they are learning or while they are upgrading their skill so 500 rupees a stipend will also be provided and modern tools latest technologies design elements they will be the feature of this particular scheme so guys many number of times in the past in prelims when they are asking questions on the scheme what they will do either they can ask a scheme and talk and can ask a question they can give a scheme and can ask a question that which particular segment will be targeted by this particular scheme one or secondly what they can do secondly they can give the scheme and will give you three four statements and will ask that what is the feature of this particular scheme so this is all about the feature of this particular scheme now to cover it we have taken the help of present articles but we have taken the help of some other material out of this particular article also so that you develop a comprehensive understanding on this so that is all about it and now let's move to next article now let's move to next article key cop document calls for progress in adapting to climate change by 2030 now this particular article guys will take with respect to gs paper number 3 climate change negotiations climate change and related negotiations climate change negotiations gs paper number 3 now first of all before going on in this particular article let's take some basic background information okay do guys from past few days if you are following us regularly you might be knowing that we are seeing that this cop 28 is going on and in this cop 28 climate change discussions are being held 
Now, when we talk about the COP, COP stands for Conference of Parties. These Conference of Parties are the annual meetings of the countries which have signed UNFCCC, United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. Now, this is the principal convention on climate change that was signed in 1992. Now, countries they meet and they discuss that how they can how they can mitigate the climate change, how they can ensure the temperature rise should not go beyond 2 degrees Celsius compared to pre-industrial level. And if possible, how temperature should not increase beyond 1.5 degrees Celsius compared to pre-industrial level. So, right now, 28th edition of this meeting is going on in Dubai. Now, in this COP28 meeting, one particular thing that have come out, a draft, a draft resolution has been moved with respect to with respect to the adaptation. Now, understand this particular thing. Basically, guys, up till now, climate discussions that have been held, they have largely focused on mitigations. They have largely focused on mitigation. Now, what is mitigation? Mitigation is how the harm can be reduced. Okay. Climate change will happen. And because of the climate change, there will be certain damages that will be there. How reduce that particular damage? Mitigation is there. But guys, understand this thing, that right now, if I tell you the fact, already 1.1 degree Celsius temperature rise since pre-industrial levels have happened. Already 1.1 degree Celsius temperature rise have happened. And it is highly likely that we will even breach the limit of 2 degree Celsius. So climate change will happen, it is sure, it is sure. So how you will adapt with the world which has changed because of the climate change? Okay, so you need to live, you need to adjust with that new world. You need to adjust with this new world, you need to adapt with this new world. So for that particular thing, adaptation strategies need to be there. For that particular thing, adaptation strategies need to be there. And up till now, we have not focused too much on the adaptation, we have focused just on the mitigation. Now, when we talk about adaptation, what adaptation includes? So adaptation refers to adjustments that will be done in ecological, social, or economic systems so that the countries can deal with the climate change. How ecological systems need to be changed. Now understand this particular thing. Climate change will happen. Climatic patterns will shift. There is going to be some impact on rainfall also. Now guys, today India is having 60% of agricultural land under rain-fed agriculture. Means they are dependent on monsoon. But tomorrow monsoons will be shifted. Droughts will become more severe. How you will prepare your ecological setup, how you will prepare your agriculture, how you will prepare your social system for that. Now, understand this thing, heat waves will increase and more and more people will be exposed to heat waves. So, what you have in place so that people can be given protection, people who are poor, how you will protect them. So, social systems, ecological systems, economical systems, how you will change them so that they can deal with the world that will emerge after climate change has come. So, adaptation. Adaptation refers to adjustment in ecological, social or economic systems that countries must make in response to these climate changes that will come. Okay. Now, within these adaptations, within these adaptations, what actions we need to take? For example, building flood defenses, setting up early warning system, switching to drought resilient crops, let's say growing millet in case of India. So, for these particular things, for these particular things, we need to have the strategies in place, which was not discussed up till now. So, therefore, in this present COP28 that is going on right now and it will conclude on Tuesday, it has been provided that by 2025, all the countries in the world needs to have a clear and a concrete adaptation program or adaptation plan by 2025. Two line, two deadlines are there. One is 2025 and other is 2030. So, by 2025, adaptation program or adaptation plan needs to be there. And by 2030, by 2030, countries have to demonstrate the progress in implementing such a plan. Okay. So, you need to make a plan and you need to show that we can implement this plan. Okay. How we are going to implement this particular plan. So, this, uh, the, uh, this roadmap or adaptation plan is to be prepared. Now, guys, when we talk about this adaptation program, this is not entirely a new thing. Even in COP21, that was 2015 Paris, even in Paris, when COP21 was held, it was decided that global goal on adaptation was necessary. Global goal on adaptation was necessary and this particular thing is being expanded. Now, guys, when we talk about adaptation, one more contention comes here. See, when we talk about the 
historic responsibility of climate change it has been shifted on developed countries because they are historic emitters so even if adaptations are to be done world developing countries poor countries who have not contributed largely to climate change who have not led it historic emissions these countries need support they need money they need finances again this issue comes at for adaptation money and finance that is needed by developing country developed country should give that money and finance but developed countries as of now seems not willing to share that particular responsibility okay so adaptation is expected to adaptation is expected to require developed countries to invest trillions of dollars in developing countries island states who are actually the risk of the climate hazard and this might emerge as a friction point this might emerge as a point of dispute between developing and developed because developing countries they will ask money developed countries are not going to give it because up till now this has been the scenario okay so that is all guys about this particular article i hope that you have understood it and now let's move to next article calibrating a strategy for india's future growth now this article will take with respect to gs paper number 3 indian economy gs paper number 3 indian economy and issues related to indian economy issues related to indian economy now moving on in this particular direction <coughs> so basically guys first of all we are going to discuss some of the economic numbers with respect to india grow india's growth so recently reserve bank of india it has estimated that indian economy in year 23 24 is going to grow at an impressive rate of 7% india's gdp was will be growing at the rate of 7% as per reserve bank of india and if we see some international bodies they have also given estimate with respect to india's growth and imf and world bank are two other organizations so imf as well as world bank they they suggest or they make a forecast that indian economy will grow at rate of 6.3% now if we see the economic growth in quarter 1 and quarter 2 so we find that in quarter 1 and quarter 2 okay first two quarters indian economy has grown at the rate of 7.8% and 7.6% which indicates that actually indian economy might see the growth rate of 7% in 2324 as suggested by rbi as suggested by rbi this is good in fact imf has proposed that in medium term that is period of 28 29 okay so from today to the period of 28 29 this medium term Indian economy will grow at an annual growth rate of six point three percent. Six point three percent. So this particular thing shows that actually India's growth rate is returning back to normal pre-pandemic level, even better than that. But point that comes here is that is Indian economy really robust? Is Indian economy actually actually Indian economy is it resilient? Fine. because guys many number of times there are many specific concerns that come with respect to indian economy so what concerns are there those concerns we are going to see here one by one in detail okay <clears throat> so let's take the concerns that we have so first concern that we have is that right now there is one global trend that is going on which is going to impact indian economy also that is movement towards deglobalization now what is deglobalization so guys deglobalization is a phenomena when world becomes less interactive with each other so in globalization there will be there will be a increased integration of the local economy with the global economy but in deglobalization opposite happens now why deglobalization is happening number one guys covid pandemic came as covid pandemic came countries discovered this particular thing that they have become too much dependent on other countries and they came out with the atmanirbharta plan even india came out with atmanirbharta usa proposed decoupling de-risking okay japan also proposed similar kind of a thing so post 2020 this deglobalization that is looking for self reliance looking for atmanirbharta that has increased in general and now specifically there are two events that are going on in the world number one is russia ukraine war and what has happened the world has actually got divided in two camps again one is the countries which are supporting russia such as china and another country supporting ukraine such as usa so what is actually happening the countries which are on one side that is russia side on the countries on another side that is the ukraine side they have got divided and a kind of a deglobalization has gone 
Secondly, guys, Israel Hamas war is going on, and because of Israel Hamas war also, countries have got divided. And because of this particular thing, guys, what is happening? Sanctions are being imposed. The climate of sanctions are going on. Supply chains got disturbed. Okay, when guys, suppose there were a lot of important goods that were going from Russia to Europe. Now they will not, their trade will not be carried. Why? Because sanctions that have been imposed on Russia. So supply chains got disturbed. Even Russia, even Russia guys, recently it was banned from SWIFT network. It was a band from Swift Network. Now, Swift is a secure messaging platform that is used by the financial institutions. So, what this thing shows? This thing shows that the global climate is not positive. Deglobalization are happening. Supply chains are getting disturbed. Countries are looking for Atma Nirbharta. And guys, India's exports will also be getting impacted in this particular direction. India's exports, sorry. India's exports will also be impacted. Okay. Now, guys, when we talk about India, India's export sector, has increased has increased impressively post 2003 period so between 2003 4 2008 9 india's exports have increased rapidly however guys when we talk about india's exports in 22 23 it was 22.8 percent of india's gdp india's exports in comparison to gdp was 22.8 percent it was around 18.7 percent in 2019 20 2021 20, okay and right now it is hovering in the range of this lower range only okay so point is that exports will further reduce because of this global uncertainty that is going on and it will impact india's economy so therefore what is needed to be done right now we need to promote more and more local consumption more and more local consumption now guys this is also exactly what is being done by China. Now, though not mentioned in this article, but please write it separately. So, right now, China is focusing on a dual circulation. What is this dual circulation? China first aims that more countries should be dependent on China. And second, China wants to ensure that their, in, their domestic population also should consume more and more Chinese goods. So, dual circulation as China is focusing on. India should also focus on internal consumption increase. Then next is investments. Now, guys, any country investments that are being done in the assets of that country, capital expenditure, this all contributes positively to the economy of that particular country. Now, guys, when we talk about India, <clears throat> India, investments are very much important. And investments, they come from savings. Investment comes from saving. Now, guys, when we talk about the savings, there have been the fall in saving rate. And if I tell you saving rates, saving rates as a proportion of GDP, in 22-23, okay, saving rates were 5.1 percent, 5.1 percent, and it was 7.8 percent during pre-COVID-19 period. So saving rates have declined from 7.8 percent of GDP to 5.1 percent. Savings have declined. Now, guys, different different interpretations comes that why savings have declined. Some economists they say that savings got declined because people use their savings to survive during the period of COVID-19. But finance minister made a statement and she said this thing that savings have declined because people are now so much confident in Indian economy that they are diluting their savings to buy new iPhone, to buy new mobile, to buy a new motorbike. Okay, so they have used their savings because now they are so much confident in economy that they think that savings might not be needed. Okay, so these are the different interpretations. But when we talk about the savings, savings are very much important to increase the gross fixed capital formation. Now see guys this particular thing. We have savings and we put the savings in the form of mutual funds. We mobilize our savings and give it to the banks in terms of the fixed deposit. That money will then further be used for the investment purpose. For example, money will be taken. Now, I will give money to bank. Bank will lend that particular money to some manufacturer, industrialist, borrower who will invest it in the investment for, for he will use it for investment purpose so savings are very much important to improve the gross capital formation in country but in india saving rates are going down so this can become a problem then next next we need to strategically use our population now guys when we talk about india india is going through the phase of demographic dividend India is going through the phase of demographic dividend. And according to the United Nations Population Fund, 2020 to 2040 will be the golden window for India. Why? Because India will have one of the largest and youngest population of the world. Okay. Now, guys, when we talk about India, 
when we talk about India. India will have a working age population of 68.9% in 2030. So around, roughly if I use a simple figure, 70%. Approximately 70% of India's population will be the working population. Dependency ratio would be around 31.2%. What is dependency ratio? Dependency ratio is the number of people who are dependent. It includes people below the age of 14 and people below the above the age of 60. Means the old people and the young children. They are the dependent. Between that, all are work all can be the part of the working class so dependency ratio is going down number of workers or working population it is increasing and our working age population will peak to 68.9 percent 70 percent by 2030 so these people will need employment but at the same time guys artificial intelligence machine learning digitization that is happening they are evolving at such a rate that they will displace a lot of manual work a lot of manual labor okay so point is that we need to we need to take a call that how we are going to deal with this okay working age population is there but the technologies are displacing population they are displacing employment so how to give employment to people in the midst of this that so according to 2223 periodic labor force survey report they said this particular thing that the employment okay the employment okay the worker population ratio number of employed person in comparison to the population it has increased to 51.8 percent from 44.1 percent okay so employment is increasing employment is increasing but we need to sustain this particular thing around 1.5 around 1.5 percentage points per year employment is increasing but is this growth sufficient to absorb even more young population that will enter the workforce okay that is something that we need to see so right now what we need to do we need to bring a growth in the non-agricultural sector because as people as economy will grow as population will grow more and more people will abandon agriculture and will look for services in the manufacturing sector in service sector so we need to absorb the people from agriculture sector to non-agriculture sector and therefore growth in non-agriculture sector needs to be high okay we need to ensure that how ai how ai okay how computing technologies they can be used to absorb more and more population then the next challenge that indian economy has to deal with respect to is with respect to the fiscal responsibility now understand this particular thing guys that as we talk about india we find this particular thing we find this particular thing that right now indian economy as we talk about so indian economy has to induce a fiscal discipline fiscal discipline our fiscal deficit has been high our debt has been very much high so what we are doing we are actually spending way more than what we are making in terms of receipt so fiscal deficit should be brought down to six percent and debt to gdp ratio should be brought to 60 percent in the aftermath of pandemic debt to gdp ratio actually increased to increased to more than 80 percent but we need to bring it to 60 percent what is debt to gdp ratio in simple terms suppose india's gdp is if 100 rupees then india's debt both internal external india's debt should be maximum 60 rupees so debt to gdp ratio is to be improved then after that after that saving rates investment rates fine technology mix should be adopted in such a way that it help indian economy to grow so this is guys all about this particular article i hope that you have understood this particular thing okay so this is all about it and uh, with this now we'll move to the next article Okay, no more hot air about air pollution. Again, this article will see with respect to the environment pollution. GS paper number three. GS paper number three. Okay, uh, one thing, guys, I want to tell you that uh, as we talk about this particular article, as we talk about this particular article, so article is written by Mr. Binoy Viswam. Now, this is not important uh, for your examination, but why I am telling you so that you get a context. So, he is a Rajya Sabha MP, okay, and is the member of CPI. Now, basically, guys, what is happening in this particular article, some outright remarks on the present government has been made. That government, they promised this in their election manifesto, promised this in their election manifesto, but has not delivered how the present government is acting on the behest of certain business groups and all such allegations are there. That is not important for your UPSC examination. So, don't spend much time on that. 
we are going to take though that particular part of this article which can be used for our examination so personal remarks some political negative remarks political commentary is not needed okay so article is talking about that government earlier has made lofty earlier has made some ambitious promises with respect to the work that they will do to reduce the impact of climate change for example government earlier promised that ecological auditing of the projects will be done for example guys right now char dham project is being taken up in uttarakhand which is the ambitious road widening or highway development program char dham project in uttarakhand ecological audit means that we will we will assess that whether projects that are being taken up they are environmentally sensitive or not will they pose some disastrous impact on environment or not so such ecological audits is to be done pollution indexing of cities is to be done fine so there will be a list that will be prepared of the cities in terms of the pollution that is there and cities which have really exceptionally high pollution there some concrete steps will be taken up so pollution indexing of cities on scientific basis will be done this was something that was promised in election manifesto by the government then pollution control mechanisms will be established on priority basis national clean air plan will be converted in a mission mode approach and there will be 35% reduction in pollution that will be done these are some of the promises that have been done but actually they did not got implemented and recently guys iq air iq air has released the world air quality report 2022 and this report we have discussed in our news analysis also so iq air has released this world air quality report and in this particular report 39 out of the most 50 polluted cities 39 are in india 39 are in india okay so air pollution is the biggest risk factor and because of this high air pollution what is happening a large number of health complications are also happening so according to lancet according to lancet which happens to be one of the most reputed health journal of the world according to lancet 1.6 million deaths are happening deaths are happening because of air pollution which is 18% of the total deaths so 18% of the de deaths in india they can be attributed to air pollution then further it is also increasing the disease burden of india for example chronic obstructive pulmonary disease 50% of the world's cases of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease are in india asthma 13% of the global cases of asthma are in india and largely they are aggravated because of air pollution and when we talk about basically guys what we are happening because of the air pollution we are losing our productive workforce and it poses an economic burden on india also and when we talk about such economic burden according to world economic forum according to world economic forum report it is provided that india pays 7.9 lakh crore rupees annually 7.9 lakh crore rupees it is the quantum of economic burden that is falling on india because of air pollution and for this particular thing guys national clean air program was started in 2019 which focused on 131 most polluted cities but implementation of this particular program has not been very much effective so government now need to take a wake up call and need to implement the climate solutions on the priority basis okay so this is guys all about this particular article now moving on to the next article what is the controversy over germany's debt break rule okay now guys first of all i'll just tell you that this is not something uh, uh, see you need not to go too much in detail in this particular thing you need to have a little bit idea with respect to this particular issue that has happened so basically guys what has happened recently recently germany recently germany decided this particular thing that they will reallocate 60 billion dollar to climate and transformation fund climate and transformation fund now see this particular thing pandemic came in 2020 and as pandemic came world countries they earmarked they dedicated or they borrowed a large money to deal with the pandemic induced challenges for economic recovery for bringing the health again on the track large money was needed and they tried to mobilize that particular money okay germany also did this particular thing 
Now, what actually had, what, what, what had, there was the pandemic emergency, emergency fund that was created in Germany. And in that pandemic emergency fund, there was $60 billion that was there. And these $60 billion are being moved, are being reallocated from this pandemic emergency fund to climate and transformation fund. To climate and transformation fund. Now, Constitutional Court of Germany, Constitutional Court of Germany has said that this particular thing cannot be done. This particular thing cannot be done. Why this particular thing cannot be done? Because what is happening? As you are diverting this particular resource to another fund, okay, at the end of the day, the money is the borrowed money. So, point is that it will further enhance the debt liability on Germany. So, this is the unconstitutional thing. Now, guys, when we talk about the Germany, when we talk about the Germany, federal government in Germany, they are restricted that they cannot go beyond a particular limit in terms of their fiscal deficit. So, they cannot have a fiscal deficit of more than 0.35%. More than 0.35%. And by diverting this particular money, which is actually a borrowed money, their fiscal deficit will stay elevated, which is not ex acceptable. Now, government had said that we need this particular thing because actually, because actually what has happening, all this, so basically they say, they say this particular thing, climate and transformation fund, okay, we need to put the money in this particular thing because what has happened, uh, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, investments have fallen, investments in green sector have fallen. And now we need to revive that and therefore this particular money will be utilized. But constitutional court has said that no, you cannot go for this. Okay, so basically what had happened? Germany's debt break rule. What is debt break rule? Their debt cannot be, okay, or their fiscal deficit cannot be more than 0.35%. Okay, so this is guys all about this particular article. Now guys, if we see in the past, Germany actually has seen budget surplus where receipt are more than their expenditure. For example, if Germany's receipts are 100 rupees, their expenditure is 90 rupees. So, because of their deficit surplus, because of economic growth, because of export-led growth of Germany, Germany has maintained their deficits at a very low level or they have the budget surpluses also. Okay. Now, we have this one article, uh, cases of human trafficking victims being forced to commit cyber crimes on the rise. So, basically guys, what actually has happened, just two, three lines are important here. So, recently, the first Interpol operation against fraud schemes. Okay, see this particular thing, guys. What has happened? So, we find this particular thing that people, they are being, uh, they are being lured in some, uh, basically there are honey traps going on online. Let me give you an example. What is happening? Certain people, they are being lured in traps where some women, or some man imitating the voice of a woman, they will call other man and they will make some romantic calls with them, will convince the other person to send some nude photographs of theirs and then that particular person is blackmailed. That particular person is blackmailed. So people are being lured into these particular traps and these individuals are then being made to do some cyber crime. They are not then being made to do cyber crime. They are being pressurized to participate in some online scams and all such kind of a thing. Such kind of incidences have increased across South Asia. Okay, South Asia, Southeast Asia. So basically what has happened recently is Operation Storm Markers 2. Operation Storm Markers, Maker, sorry. Operation Storm Makers 2 was taken up in which Interpol as well as the Indian enforcement agencies have participated and they have arrested 281 countries for such kind of things okay so this is guys all about it beyond that nothing much is there so i'll not advise you to go too much in detail now main practice question for today so question is for gs3 many ongoing geopolitical conflicts such as russia ukraine war israel hamas war have created a movement towards deglobalization how india should deal with such trends GS paper number 3, 10 marker question. Okay, So that is all guys about it. And with this, we come to an end to the today's session. Guys, I hope that you have liked this particular video and I hope that you are getting the benefit, maximum benefit out of this particular sessions. If you have liked it, please do hit the like button. Please do subscribe. And I always appreciate the lovely comments that you leave 